I'm back. Woo! Oh, it messed up. Is it going to even work? Oh, it will work on this surface. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. All right. I'm Devin from Devin Talks Tabletop, your friendly neighborhood board gamer, where the games are YouTube channel. Hi. I'm Devin from the neighborhood board gamer. And this is Devin Talks Tabletop, the YouTube channel where the games are made up and what I say doesn't matter. I'm back, so, so back, and I have got things to do. I've got videos to do today. Number one is just going to be jumping into whatever's closest. So whatever's closest right here is going to be Mythic Mischief. So this was on sale, not the Headmaster Big Box Pledge, but this was on sale at the, well, who makes this game? Ivy. Killing it today. Guys, in my defense, I was on the road for three weeks, and then I came home to an entire family who has COVID. So instead of getting any amount of rest, which wasn't always a guarantee with a family with three kids, I definitely wasn't getting any rest and have not to this day. I did get a little nappy in today, so that was nice. A little nappy was good. But um, yeah, so Ivy was selling this and the base game and its expansions. They were selling it at the booth at Gen Con, but this is my pledge that came in before I ever left for Gen Con. It just, I didn't have enough time to unbox it between when I came back from family vacation and whenever I left. So, Mythic Mischief, which is a delightful abstract strategy game um, that I suck at. I'm really not good at it. I have full belief that my son and other people will just wipe the floor with me. I taught uh, my son how to play Tiny Epic Galaxies last night, and he beat me like, what was it, 20, let's see, 24? I think it was 24 points to goodness. 24 points, or 25 points maybe, to like 16. It wasn't my best display. Ugh, and I guess I forgot that there is a top down. But I, I, I don't really need the top down until, you know, like now. So I'll just set that up so it's purdy for people. And then let's get the trash on the ground. And let's get jumping into this. So this is their third game. Ivy Studios started off with Moonrakers, which has now made a gargantuan return to Kickstarter with a 1.8 million, 1.9 million campaign. Crazy, crazy job on their Titan Edition. Super proud of them. And then they pivoted after Moonraker's initial campaign to Veiled Fate. And then after Veiled Fate, they did Mythic Mischief. This one is just, I love the art design of this. I love the art of all of their games. I think that they are truly exceptional at creating visually appealing worlds. Um, but this is the big box that contains everything for it. This has got all of the different factions, including the Ghost faction. Um, and I just, I can't wait to jump into this. These are the different expansions, which give little rule books. There's a little bit of bend to this, but I'm not going to send it back to them, believe it or not. I think I'm okay with where it's at. I'm going to keep that there. So we've got all the rules, got the expansion rules. Um, this comes with, I think, a base four. I think a base four factions. Let's see. Yes. Vampires, Frankenstein's monsters, zombies, and wizards. And then you can get the witches, the trolls, and the ghosts. These are the glow-in-the-dark ghosts. Um which it was on that packaging that I ripped off. I'm not going to turn off the lights because I don't have an automated light system, so I'd have to physically stand up and go do that, and that just doesn't seem like something that anybody wants right now. So there's the rule books. <clears throat> Here's the lovely board. Got fabulous game trays underneath, <clears throat> which wonderfully enough has all eight of the fa factions locked away, or all seven of the factions locked away. Um, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, all seven of the factions locked away. And then got the nice Tome Keeper here, the busty, heavy tome. Busty in like a good way. I meant like busty, like a marble bust of something. Massive amount of books. You would think that some of these books would like fall out of this, you know, binding, but apparently not. So he slots in quite nicely there. The Tome Keeper is terrifying. The one that you want to avoid. I liken this game to, and I've said it before, I don't know if I've said it on camera, but I've said it quite a few times, where I think of it as Argus Filch in Hogwarts, 
And the reason why I think that is because in the movie, oh, there's two. Oh, that's right. Because you can you can do two boards and do like blitz play opposite each. Other. So I've got two tome keepers. Beefy, beefy, beefy. Um, <laughs> we've got the beef. Uh, oh, I haven't even done a timestamp. Talking too much timestamp. Oh, I've got a Gen Con haul that I need to do where I've got surprising news about my mug. Or a new mug. Until then, I'm going to have that immensely satisfying hefty handle. And let's get, keep opening stuff up. So the reason why I think of Harry Potter is not actually because of the movies. Like, I know that in the movies, there's that he's always trying to evade Argus Filch whenever Harry has the invisibility cloak and whenever they're trolling around the castle. But... <laughs> This is something that maybe no one cares about or thinks about, but there was a video game for Harry Potter, and it was this fantastic PC game that I just have such good memories for. Um, and there was this one scene where you are in the library and you are trying to evade Filch and his cat, and I think you can even like get above on like and like walking on the tops of the bookshelves, um, but it's just this whole vibe, it's this whole mood. And I always think about it whenever I'm playing this game. I think about trying to evade Argus Filch in the Hogwarts library. And that's to, this is to me the Tome Cooper. And he always like like the Tome Cooper also looks like it has just like that perpetual frown, which to me fits Argus Filch so well. So I've got two boards here, which goes along with playing with the two Tome Keepers at the same time. And then I've got all of these big beefy. Uh, so these are the debris. Um, the clutter, you know, that you've got on there. These are the spots that the Tome Keeper goes to. One, two, three. Drop that to the ground. More clutter. Can you imagine, like, visually, I, I get what's going on here, but can you... Oh, dear, I can't hold on to anything right now. Can you imagine that? Like, that many books just in a pile on the floor? Like, that gives me anxiety. Thinking of, like... And also, almost all of those are hardcovers, which is just an incredibly mean way to treat hardcover books. Like that is so upsetting to me on so many levels. It's not even just that there's books on the ground. It's that, I mean, that's like 20 or 30 hardcover books that are just dumped on top of each other. I mean, that is busting up some bindings. That is like ruffling and bending and cutting pages. That is just, it's incredibly rude that anybody would want to do that. So, just something that's on my mind. Something that is on my mind. So these are the hexes for the witches, the pile of limbs for the zombies, and that. And then also there's these little blood tokens. I don't think I've played with... Maybe the vampires, do they have blood tokens? I haven't... I don't think I've played with them. So yeah, it's an abstract board where if I'm going to talk about how you play, might as well do that. Oh, man, I just love everything visually that they do. Uh, you've got these locations, and on these locations, you're going to have spots that, in order, uh, you have before lunch and after lunch, and the Tome Keeper is going to go to these locations in numerical order, and along the way, you can organize where bookshelves are, like push them around, you can push the, you can lure the Tome Keeper, keeper different locations, all of that allows you to influence the visual space and the pathing that the Tome Keeper and any people will do. And your goal is to have the Tome Keeper catch the other team, um, obviously more than they catch you, but enough times to where you have more points by the end of the game. And every single one of these factions plays asymmetrically. So the witches might be able to teleport around, they might be able to influence other elements, and then, you know, you might have the zombies, uh, which or the, you know, Frankenstein's monsters, which can blow through bookshelves. You might have, oh wait, this is the witches. Are these the wizards? I think so. Yeah, these are the wizards. These are the witches. And they all have different styles of play. And I really like how different each of them feel, but also um, how satisfying it is to try to explore the powers of each of these. So let me see. Uh, these are all the bookshelves. Is there a place to put bookshelves? To like slot bookshelves in? I don't really, possibly not. Does that go right there? That goes right there. It doesn't really look like there's anything else. I do have sleeves for it, so I can sleeve it at some point. I don't know if I'll sleeve it on camera. But yeah, oh, I guess while I'm talking about books, 
I can just talk about books. Why not? Um, because, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll do that in an actual video where I just talk about books. Uh, but let's see. So those are all the cards. Um, they can fit in one of those slots. And then they, they might have two of them in case you do sleeve them. They may not. They may need both of those spots to fit. Otherwise, I might have put these in there. But these are the, the marker book tomes that you use to level up your characters. And so each of each character has, you know, they have like base move stats, but then they have all these other abilities that the dots are where they start out at the beginning of the game, but you can also upgrade them by every time you put a tome in, it caps out a spot to where the dice that you have afterwards dictates the amount of times you can do that. That's really loud. That's so loud. I wonder how low that is. That doesn't even sound like a regular. I wonder if it's a helicopter. Maybe if it's a helicopter for the hospital. Sounds like it's going that way. A helicopter for the hospital would be going that way. I don't know what that was. Um, it was a loud airborne vehicle. That's what it was. And so you slot in and then your dice will follow whatever number is at the top there and that dictates how many times you can activate that power on your turn. Really nifty, satisfying setup. Um, I don't think I'm gonna open all of these on camera because it's just the plastic baggies for their individual tomes. Um, and I, I may not sleeve it either on camera because that just seems excessive. Seems like no one wants to watch that, Devin. No one wants to watch that. I've also got all these little pins because I did all of the little, uh, I did all of the puzzles that they did, and I also backed in like the first 48 hours. So I did everything that you could do to get pins, other than just straight up buy pins. I don't think they had other pins for sale. But I've got these little cute ones, a red one, a purple one, and a green one. I think they had different names for them, like emerald and royal and stuff like that, but it's just green and red and purple, because that, that's all they are. So, where did these go? I guess all these slot into here. Possibly, I guess so. And then this just can go in as well. And I need to probably put these back in here. Anyways, this is an abstract game. So I am like, I don't know. There's some ab abstract games that I like and some that I do not. Uh, for example, I don't really care for Santorini. I still own it. It's one of the first games that I started teaching my son how to play board games. I, that's annoying. How did they fit in there? Oh, they did two this way and one that way. Ho ho! You gotta be smarter than Devin to figure this stuff out, guys. You can't be as dumb as Devin. So, all of this stuff can go in. Let's slot in those two boards there. Let's slot in all of these boards. Can this go this way? No. I guess that's enough space. You know, I don't need any more space. But yeah, this is, a, this is a fun abstract game. This is one that I definitely will keep. It's got a lot more robust options, I think, versus Santorini and other uh, smaller abstracts. I do like abstract games. I really like Shobu. I like Talk. I like other ones. It's just that some of them don't have enough oomph for me, and this one has enough oomph for me. So, and you can quote me on that. Ivy can take that to the bank. Mythic Mischief has enough oomph. And you got to make sure you do like the O-O- MPH. It's got enough oomph. I think that's that's all that you need to know is that Mythic Mischief has got enough oomph and that Devin is absolutely killing it right now. So Alex gave me one of these from his house and as a fidgeter I love it. It's about to fall off. Is it going to fall off before it caves or is it going to cave first? It might. Oh! It, it fell off and caved at the same time. All right, that's it. This is Mythic Mischief. I'm super excited to play. I was uh, ready to unbox it and get it to the table soon. That's all I've got for you guys. I hope that you have a good one. Um, and if you have played this game, let me know what you think about it. If you've played another IV games, let me know what you want to know about this one. If you've played all of the IV Studios games, let me know which one's your favorite and why. If you haven't played any of them and you don't care about it, just say hashtag cheese knife. Um, and if you want any particular content, message, you know, comment down below and let me know what you want me to do. 
actual dehydrated timestamp. For real though, I definitely need to, uh, I definitely need to get an inept gameplay of this because goodness knows it would be inept. Even if I did play fully by the rules, it would still be an inept gameplay because I'm terrible at this game, even though I love it. So I'm not terrible at their other two games, but I am terrible at this one. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, if you've made it this far, um, consolation prize for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so this came from with my copy of, of Viticulture. So if anybody wants a 25% off discount to the Steam version of the game, um, this is good for 25% off of the Steam version, the essential edition of the game. So I, I don't need this on Steam because I've got it physically somewhere so it's over there I can't it's down there I can't see it so yeah um, let me just uh, read it off and then uh, you know so this is the steam coupon for 25% off viticulture just in case you want that zero in X six Z dash a B M B L dash y z capital i 7 p o n x 6 z a b m b l y z i 7 p and nothing says devin let's end the unboxing of mythic mischief by giving a 25 percent discount on a different game that's how we roll here See you guys.